Welcome to the Mitten Mysteries Podcast, hosted by Haley V. Hi friends, welcome back to the podcast. If you are new here, hi, how are you guys? My name is Haley V. And on this podcast, we talk all about history, mystery, and all things strange and unusual here in the Mitten State. I hope you guys had a great weekend and you are looking forward to next week with it being the holiday week, 4th of July. I know a bunch of people do a bunch of family activities, go camping, go to the lake, go up north, which is what my family likes to do. I'm always so curious about what everybody does for the 4th of July here in Michigan. I know a lot of people go to the west side of the state, the east side of the state, up north, but most of the time my family will always go up north for the 4th of July and we like to kind of hang out in Mackinac City, possibly go on to Mackinac Island, but we just really like to enjoy up north because that weather is so beautiful during this time and it's always such a fun time up there. If you guys live down more in like lower Michigan and you travel up north, you guys will know what I'm talking about. It's just like a whole experience going up north. It's so much fun. Definitely recommend it if you haven't yet. Kind of going with the theme from last week about the Holly Hotel in Holly, Michigan. We're going to be talking all about the supposedly, allegedly very haunted Fenton Hotel in Fenton, Michigan. I cannot tell you guys how many comments I got about the Fenton Hotel over on my TikTok at Haley V. There was so many comments on my Holly Hotel video talking about the Fenton Hotel and how haunted it is. So everybody was wanting me to talk about this place. I have never personally been there, but all the stories that I've been reading online and just all the history is very interesting to me. And it, it kind of, it's a very similar type of hotel compared to the Holly Hotel with it being a railroad city. So we're going to get into that today and kind of go over the brief history about Fenton and the history of the hotel. And of course, we're going to talk all about the ghosts that haunt the Fenton Hotel. Now let's take a trip back in time to 1834 where the city that is now known as Fenton, Michigan, was once known as Dibberville after Clark Dibble. Clark Dibble was a native of New York, and he was exploring the wilderness along the Shiawassee River, where the two Indian trails met. Dibble was among thousands of people, mostly from the eastern states, who left their homes in search of new territories and land on which to build their future homes. Congress had passed the Squatter Act in 1830, and land was available for purchase for $1.25 per acre. Legend has it that Dibble was actually looking for Grand Blank, but because of the inaccuracies in the 1815 survey by the Surveyor General of the United States, it was believed that he missed his trail and stumbled upon what is now Fenton instead. Other settlers at the time, including William N. Fenton and Robert Leroy, were also natives of New York. They followed him soon after. Clark Dibble later died in June of 1841, and historians say that he died after trying to save his dog from a path of a falling tree. Not the most pleasant way to go, I would say. But very heroic for saving the dog, I will admit that. So there is a legend of how the town had gotten started, and the story somewhat goes like this. Three men sat around a table lit only by a flickering candle. Glasses and a jug of whiskey adorned on the tabletop, and the three gents have indulged liberally, so they were getting, they were getting lit. What had been a high-stakes poker game among the threesome was winding down when a proposal to change the betting currency from cash to personal pride reignited the passion of the players. Each of the three players picked up their cards and assessed the rank of their five-card stud hand. So what were the stakes of this high-stake poker game? Well, if you had won, the person who had won would be able to name the city. Benjamin Rockwell had laid down his first hand, a pair of tens. Robert Lee Roy followed, following a three of a kind of queens. Lee Roy smiled at William Fenton, who had set his cards face down on the table. Lee Roy asked if Fenton was folding his hands to the three ladies, and Fenton shrugged and began turning his cards over one by one. First, a king, followed by another king, then an ace that followed another ace, and then Fenton stopped. The three of a kind beats the two pair, and now it was Fenton's turn to smile as he reached down and flipped his final card, another king, full house. Fenton's chuckle grew into a full roaring laugh as he raised his hands in triumph. Unfortunately, there is no such detail to the legend that the game of poker determined Dibberville be renamed to Fenton instead of Leroy. Some even dispute the legitimacy of the poker game story, but what fun bit of folklore to share with generations long after the town adopted its current name. 
The legend is visualized in a sculpture, The Game, by artist Oleg Kendria, setting out on the grounds of the Fenton Community and Cultural Center. The artwork was commissioned by Jocelyn and Phil Hagerman, gifted to the city by the Hagermans to honor the Fenton's history. The story actually goes on to say that the game continued with winners of individual hands naming streets. Main Street going to Leroy, a residential street to Rockwell, Elizabeth Street later changed to Shiawassee after Leroy's wife, and William Fenton's spouse named Adelaide was Miss Rockwell's name, Lavinia, also earned recognition. In 1837, Robert Leroy and William Fenton bought the sawmill and surrounding land and began to develop the permanent community. Benjamin Rockwell joined the pair and a short time later purchased a third interest in the development. Leroy constructed a hotel and served as the town's postmaster. Besides being noted for winning the poker game, Fenton gained true fame as the 7th Lieutenant Governor of Michigan from 1848 to 1852, and the town was initially referred to as Fentonville, but organized as the Township of Fenton on March 6, 1838. And in the 1850s, Fenton was the northernmost point of the Detroit Grand Haven and Milwaukee Railroad. The significance of the railroad stop made the area an important trade center in southeastern Michigan. The Fenton Railroad Depot was constructed in 1857, but unfortunately the wooden structure burned almost to the ground on March 19, 1923. The brick building that now stands on the site was constructed on the remnants of the building that remained. The Fenton Hotel Tavern and Grill used to be called the Vermont House back in 1856. It was owned by a man named Mr. Seed who had built and owned this back in the day. In 1868, Abner Roberts was the first proprietor of the hotel, which was named the Fenton House at that time. After many changes in ownership, D.W. DeNeo purchased it in 1882 and renamed it to the DeNeo House. DeNeo thoroughly overhauled, papered, and furnished it in that style of the time, and a grand opening party was given under the management of the Capernaum Club, a social group composed of the town's leading citizens. Nearly 200 guests danced the waltz on this canvas floor in the time to the excellent music furnished by an orchestra from Owasso. The dinner prepared was by Mrs. DeNeo and was tastefully arranged, and the table was loaded with everything anyone could desire. The grand opening was a grand success and gave evidence that the DeNeo house was the best-kept house between Detroit and Grand Rapids. When the telephone came to Fenton in 1883, the DeNeo house was one of the first subscribers to it. In 1886, DeNeo further improved the first floor, which contained the billiard room, bar, and sample room. The hotel had barn accommodations for 100 horses and a hall 30 by 80 feet in size for public parties. In 1898, the proprietor was Mr. Hurd, who renamed the hotel to the Fenton house. Heard was also put in improvements, building a new brick kitchen 20 by 30 feet and installing a steam heating plant and fixing up rooms for the employees on the second floor. At that time, the Fenton House had porches at the second and third stories, running the entire length of the hotel. But those porches came down on February 17, 1904, and that was the day that John Moyer's team of horses ran away. According to an eyewitness account, the team was frightened into a run on Main Street, Grange Hall Road at the time, near the depot, and they swung over the sidewalk in the front of the hotel with one horse going each side of the post supporting the porches. The horses knocked down the post and the falling timbers broke out several windows of the hotel, but did little damage otherwise. Around 1916, T.J. Demanios, who owned the Linden Hotel, came into possession of the Fenton Hotel. Prohibition cut the hotel's business down by a lot, but it was the Great Depression that really forced the hotel to temporarily close. After the Prohibition ended in 1933, the hotel reopened under the management of Arthur, TJ's son, and his wife, Margaret DeManios. The Fenton Hotel is said to have received the first liquor license in Genesee County after Prohibition. At the time, US 23 ran through the center of town and the hotel regained its reputation as a fine eating place for travelers passing through. On the weekends and especially on Saturdays, which was football day, the crowd was huge with lines of people waiting to get into this place. Through the years, the hotel was used less and less as a hotel and more of a dining restaurant and banquet place. When Ray and Ann O'Reilly purchased the place in 1946, it was called the Hotel Fenton and remained its reputation for the Roadhouse Diner. Hotel Fenton was owned by the O'Reillys until the early 1970s, and the next 25 years brought many different owners to the hotel until Nick and Peggy Soros purchased it in 1997. Then they named it the Fenton Hotel. 
The Sauruses continued to operate it as the white tablecloth fine dining restaurant that it was, and in 2006, the Fenton Hotel became 150 years old. So to celebrate this, the Sauruses took under a renovation that, that included a name change to the current Fenton Hotel Tavern and Grill. So after learning all about the history about Fenton and how it became the city of Fenton and how this hotel became about, you would think after 150 years of history at this place that this place is haunted? And who are the ghosts that haunt this hotel? Let's find out together. So the first ghost that is believed to haunt the restaurant is a man named Emery. And he was supposedly the old custodian that had worked at the Fenton Hotel at the time. His footsteps can be heard walking around upstairs in his old room where he used to live at the hotel and has been unoccupied ever since he has passed away. So there's a bunch of different reports. I can't really tell if it's from the same ghost or if it's a different one. So I'm just going to kind of tell you both of them and you can kind of decide on your own. So the one ghost that is said to haunt the upstairs named Emery there's also reports of him coming down to the bar and ordering a Jack Rocks, like a Jack Daniels. And every time that they would go to pour the drink and bring it to him, he would be gone. He just, he just disappears. But then there's another source that says at table 32, a man will appear from time to time and order a Jack Daniels. And after pouring the drink, the bartender will attempt to serve it, but the man always, is always gone. So I don't know if that's Emery, the ghost of the man that lived upstairs that worked at the hotel, or if it's a different ghost. But basically, a man at the bar will order a Jack Daniels, and every time they go to bring it to him, it just disappears. Now, I've seen other reports about the other ghost that seems to haunt this area. The two reports are a little conflicting, too, so I'm just kind of giving you guys all of them. But the one story says that it was a girl that used to work at the hotel that had ended up pregnant and she was not married to anybody and she got very sad and depressed. And unfortunately, in the bathroom, she hung herself in the third stall. And other reports say that it was during the time of the hotel was operating with the third floor it was used by prostitutes and one of them became pregnant and it was by the ho one of the hotel guests. So it is said that she had hung herself and her apparition has been seen in the ladies room and a guest who was using one of the stalls once felt somebody touch her hair and pull a few strands as she sat down. So there's kind of two conflicting stories with that one. So one seems to be a girl that used to work there. And then there's another one about a prostitute back in the day of the time when the third floor was open and used as a hotel. She got pregnant by one of the paying customers. And of course, she was upset. And so she hung herself. And there's a lot of activity in the bathroom, apparently. Like anytime you would go into the bathroom, a lot of people feel like they're being watched or they're usually touched. And it's not just in the third stall, it's multiple stalls in the bathroom, but that seems to be another phenomenon that happens at the hotel. Now, while I was reading a couple of these reports, I came across this one, and this seemed to be very odd to me. So one of the bartenders told her story about witnessing wine glasses that just flew off their shelves and flew across the room and broke. And then another unseen presence called her name when the entire place was empty so somebody called her name behind her she went to look and nobody was there and she has been touched several times while working and probably one of the weirdest things that has happened is at the bar, there was a couple customers, they seen a bartender and somebody was behind hugging her. But when they went to ask her, she could not feel or see anything or anybody near her. But the people were watching this person or entity hug this bartender. There are some other things that seem to go on at this hotel. There's a disappearing black cat that likes to roam around the hotel, a spirit of an old customer that likes to linger and it will grab the butts of the waitresses when they walk past, which is really creepy. There's voices that come out of the bar speakers when the PA is completely off. There's disembodied, weird, quiet, whispering female voices that can be heard on the upper floor. There's also a bearded man that is seen outside of the second story window from people walking by. They can see this bearded man. There's window shutters that open and close when there's no wind around, no evidence of wind. There's no, you know, it's just not blowing, but the window shutters keep opening and closing. There's disembodied 
ethereal voices and footsteps that are found all over the hotel, restaurant, and bar. The lights will flicker on and off by themselves. They shut on and off all the time. A lot of paranormal investigators still go to this place and some seances have been held there. And the ghosts that still hang around there seem to make contact every time. But none of them want to go towards the light, apparently. There's also a tall man in a black top hat that can be seen at this place, either in the windows or just apparitions seen of this man. And there's also a strange figure of an entity who actually took payment from several customers <laughs> at the hotel. So there are definitely a lot of experiences that people have reported here at this bar and grill. I have never personally been there, but I would love to go and visit for myself to see if I can pick up on anything. But you have to let me know if you guys have ever been to this hotel, restaurant, and bar. It definitely sounds interesting and it seems like there's a lot of activity here. But I would love to get your guys' thoughts. As always, you guys can follow me over on Instagram at Haley V or The Mitten Mysteries. You could also subscribe over on YouTube. I post the podcast over there and you can comment down below in the comments. Let me know what you guys thought about today's video. And if you're interested, you could also email the mitten mysteries at gmail.com with any creepy legend stories or anything that you want to talk about. And I would love to tell everybody about it here on the podcast. So if you want to send us an email. I would love to get your information and know all the creepy, weird, strange things you guys have witnessed here in the Mitten State. But for now, if you enjoyed today's podcast, make sure you guys give it a five-star rating and leave a review down below letting us know what you liked about it. And we will be talking to you guys in our next episode. Stay spooky, y'all.